mentors can also become partners if you work it right, right? And and what's so bad to have, you know, an unbelievable mentor as a partner in a business and you end up getting a lot of free advice then across the board. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. Stay, Luke, pa- stay Paid in the doing, house. Man? I'm doing great, man. I came back from our production facility. A lot of people who listen to this don't realize like we have a marketing company, but we also print, right? Yeah. So we print postcards, a, a customizable magazine. Got to go see the guys and, and girls down at the uh, facility down there. And those are the true warriors, the ones who have stuck it out all through COVID, who have been dependable, consistent. And I just think, oh yeah, I think in your business right now, like take away from this podcast, if you're not thanking the little engines, and I shouldn't say even little, the big engines that drive your business, man, you're missing out yeah. because those are the people People, those are the true heroes that, that drive it. We want to be here 100%. without them. We are super th- grateful for them. And we're going to be speaking with someone today who really doesn't need much of an introduction. Yes. You have heard of him. His name is Kevin Harrington. He's an original shark on Shark Tank. He's the inventor of the infomercial, a pioneer of the As Seen on TV brand. His businesses have produced over $5 billion in global Ooh, sales. With a B. <laughs> while taking over 500 products to market. He's the author of four books with his newest one releasing tomorrow, September 22nd, titled Men to millions where Kevin shares his secrets to success in business relationships and beyond. Kevin, it's an honor to have you here. Welcome to stay paid. Hey, you said a mouthful. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a lot to, to create that mouthful. So no, what we really want to talk today about is this idea of mentor to millions. You know, I, I was watching a video of yours and correct me if I got this right, but um, you said, I believe like the first 30 years of your life, you kind of spent wanting to be an entrepreneur, preparing to be an entrepreneur, the middle 30 being that entrepreneur. And now this last 30 really mentoring and teaching other entrepreneurs. So talk to us a little bit about yeah. this book and, and how you kind of came to that realization that this was now your passion was to mentor others. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, I I grew up one of six kids, Cincinnati, Ohio. My dad was a bartender and he saved up enough money to open up his own bar, Harrington's Irish pub. So at 11 years old, I was working under my father in his, in his, in his first place. Then he would build them, sell them, get bigger ones, nicer ones, more uh, catering halls and uh, nightclubs and all kinds of stuff. So, um, but when I was working there, wasn't just bar backing or loading up, uh, the dishwashers, he would bring me in and teach me how the business worked, the supply awesome. side, the, the, the thievery side, the, you know, <laughs> the, who was stealing, you know, one, he had me counting beer, the beer guys delivering kegs and it's just count how many ke- kegs we get. And he brings two in and two and then he'd take two empties in the truck and two more in and four, six, eight. And then my dad comes walking through the kitchen. There's a guy's going to the truck and he says, wait a minute, where are you going? Some taking two empties to the truck. And he said, well, let me see that one underneath. It was a full keg of beer <laughs> that he's taking back to the truck. Two full ones in, one full one back. Hey, he got over on an 11 year old, right? I mean, this was the nature of the business. But um, I, as, as I learned, you know, the the, the, the chef was stealing steaks. One night he'd take the garbage out. And there's, you know, 16 beautiful New York strips in there. So like, yeah. Everybody's coming at you when you're an entrepreneur. But I did learn that I don't want to be a restaurateur at, at that <laughs> age. So that was, uh, I, I, I joke, but he w- w- walked me through the finances and the inventories and all of that, the prep work. Make a long story short, though. I started a business when I was in high school, driveway ceiling and ceiling cracks and beautifying driveways, asphalt. And then I started a heating and air conditioning business in college because I had to pay my own way through school. Again, one of six kids, number four, Mm. the bar business is good, but not enough to put six kids through all kinds of colleges and everything, you know? Mm. So as I was mentored from my father, I realized there were certain things that he could help me with, but I, w- I was marketing and sales oriented, but I didn't have finance background. So here I, I'm building, I get into the as seen TV business. One day I'm watching cable TV and one of the channels went dark and 
it wouldn't come back on. And I called the cable company and they said, oh, it'll be dark for six hours. It's only an 18 hour a day channel. Mm. And we just program 18 hours. It's a brand new channel. They don't have a budget for 24 hours. That's when the light bulb went off. I'm going to put products in there. But Putting a product in there is easy, but having the finances to have the inventory and the people and the staff and everything you needed to prepay for your production and for your inventories and everything, that's a whole different story because I, I wasn't an independently wealthy entrepreneur when I started this 38 years ago, okay? This is when I got involved with the As Seen a TV world. I own As Seen a TV Inc., as seen at TV.com. We were doing literally 50 plus infomercials a year. Oh Billy Mays, Jack LaLanne, George Foreman, Tony Little, 50 Cent in his headphones, Paris Hilton and her lip clippers, Kim Kardashian, you name it, Chloe Kardashian, we did a big thing with, Flo Rida, et cetera. So, um, you know, where did I get the money? Well, I didn't start with you know, I had like 25 grand when I started because, again, that was kind of like money I had saved as a young entrepreneur. But I, I went to banks and they said, you know, no way, Jose, you, <laughs> there's no assets here. OK, <laughs> so I'm like, how am I going to build this business? I finally found a mentor in the world of finance. This guy was a retired bank president. I showed him my business. I showed him the sales. I showed him the model. And he said, well, where have you been? I said, I've been turned down by five banks. And he said, oh, he said, that was a tough process, wasn't it? And I said, oh, I said, yeah, I'm done. I can't, they're, they're, you know, and some of them didn't even, weren't even nice about it. He said, hey, look, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to mentor you absolutely free. And, and what were you trying to raise? He said, like three million or so. I said, yeah, I'm looking for minimum of three million. He said, I probably will get it from one of the banks that turned you down. He said, but one way or another, I know that I'll get you the three million. Right. And after I do, and there's no charge for that, after I do, you're going to want to sit down with me and say, man, you got to become part of this company here. And wow. so 90 days later, with three million in cash sitting in my bank account, I sat down with my mentor to then put a deal together and he joined the company in an official capacity because again, he had retired, but he wasn't done working the rest of his life. He had a lot, he was looking to have a lot of fun with his new explosive business. We went from 50 million to 500 million oh my when we gosh. got capital. So all I'm saying is there's tons of entrepreneurs out there right now. They may be in a similar boat. They got great ideas. They got great things. They don't have the cash. Well, that's why they come sharks on Shark Tank, right. and things like that. But, you know, you know, sharks aren't going to write every check. Mm hmm. We're getting, I mean, I get 150 pitches a week for checks for cash right now, still. still. And, and, you know, it, Shark Tank is, has been very good in many ways, but it also clogs up my inbox, too. So <laughs> sometimes it's hard to figure out what's for real. But to make a long story short, this, this, was, this guy was a finance mentor. He made other mistakes inside the business that, fortunately, we had other people that were able to help correct some of that. But make a long story short, one of the biggest breakthrough mentors that I ended up sitting with was Richard Branson. And wow. I sat with him for a couple of days and, you know, had some one-on-one -on -one time with him. And he, you know, he's like, Kevin, I've seen, I've seen these shows, these infomercials, these stars, these, the Tony little guy, tell me the story about him. I said, Oh, he was a bodybuilder, personal trainer. And I met him and I said, Tony, what do you have that we could do an infomercial with? And he's like, what's an infomercial? And I said, well, it's a, it's a 30 minute long it. commercial, right? And he said, well, yeah, I think I have some things. And boom, we built a multi-billion dollar brand. But I don't own that brand. Tony Little owns his brand. So mm. these were some of the mistakes we had been making, building brands without owning them. I mean, I partnered with other people that own the brands, I brought all the magic. Yeah, you they, did all the sales. <laughs> we made the money while we were selling, but they owned the core asset. So I had to change my model. I had to brand my products and myself in the process. And that is when I'm sitting with Branson. He says, you got to start, you know, branding yourself, write books, do this, create content. And I came out of there charged up, wrote four books and 
started promoting them. Who sold the books? Mark Burnett from Shark Tank. And he called me to no say, way. man, That's I don't amazing. know if you're right for the show. I just got to meet you wow. because all these, you've been pitching all these products for all these years. We got all these people. And this was before Shark Tank ever existed because we, we, I actually shot the original pilot and all of the first 175. Yeah, Shark seconds. Tank was basically a reality show of yep. infomercials. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. Of pitches, yeah. Perfect. So, so I got to ask you, Kevin, because it's like I'm hearing the mentors in your life literally made you millions, not in the sense that they did the work, but they helped guide and direct you and what you need to do. How does one, my natural question is, how do I find a mentor? Like a lot of people listening to this are probably like, well, I don't know Richard Branson. How do I, like, how do I get a mentor for my own life, my own business? What is, what is that? What should I look for in a mentor? Yeah. So great questions. And by the way, I didn't know Branson either, but I found a way to get to somebody that did. Love and that. so, um, but let's, let's talk about it. I mean, so the, the, the first step, the, the, you know, I had a, this business that was in the SC and TV space and needed money. Right. But I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm writing on a, on a weekly basis, writing hundreds of checks, TV stations, fulfillment centers, media companies, phone centers, banks, credit card processors, insurance companies, et cetera. So you're, you're sending money to all these people, lawyers, accountants, banks, et cetera. They're the first place that you go. These are people that love to cash your checks. They're going to love to give you some free advice on somebody that might be good for you because the more they can help you grow, the more, the bigger those checks will be. I mean, when we were doing 50 million a year, we were spending in the neighborhood of about $10 million in media. So 10 million is a lot, but when we grew at the 500 million, we were spending a hundred million. In media. So, <laughs> Josh, um, we're not spending so a month enough. <laughs> now we, we start doing all these, these connections that you've got. So I say, start at your home base, friends, relatives, people you're in business with, partners, suppliers, and that's, you know, who do you write checks to? Suppliers, right? And by the way, they are very forthcoming. What do you need? You need this, you know, let me, you know, and I say, can you please get back to me with anything you've got, even with a yes or a no within 48 hours? Because again, I write them checks. They should be willing to help me out. Yeah, they want to help you. And so, but beyond that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the bank president that was retired, I actually got him through one of my professional organizations okay. and I belong to, to a bunch. I mean, right now, um, you know, I belong, you ever heard of uh, Joe Polish's genius network, mm-hmm. right? There's genius network. There's, there's a um, board of advisors, Mike Calhoun. Then I also, I, I was one of the co-founders of the original entrepreneurs organization, EO. Mm-hmm. Have, have you heard of EO before? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Big, big company. I mean, it's not a company, it's a nonprofit, right. but we started that in 1987. And when you joined EO, you got a group of mentors on your, they, they, it was called a forum that you had a weekly, a monthly board of advisors or, you know, mentor type meeting with um, the group that, that you were assigned to. So um, I, th- this is, is, you know, so from, from, friends and relatives and partners and people you do business with to professional organizations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So as it turned out for Richard Branson, I, I, I just put the feelers out, who knows him, um, wanted to get together, hook up and found out that, you know, yes, he spends a lot of time in Necker. I live in Florida. It's a hop, skip and a jump over there and um, made a little donation to his charity and the rest is history. So, That's awesome. you know, it, it, I mean, uh, I'll give you an example one day, um, and this is this is back um, 30 years ago. So it was before Donald Trump became the president of the United States. But I had a, a challenge by one of my employees. I said uh, I had um, had had dinner with Bill Clinton up at the um, a Hay House uh, or the, uh, the one of the big hotels up in Washington, D.C. And. And, and I came back and one of the guys said, oh, so you think you can get anybody to take your calls and get a meeting <laughs> with anyone because you met with the president? I said, listen, I said, it, it, it was a, it was a plan I executed and I made it happen. And I'm, I'm pretty good at it. He said, I, I'll make you a bet. You got one week to meet with Donald Trump. You'll never be able to pull it off. 
And this is in 1988, I think it was. So it's 32 years ago, give or take. And my, my math is right. Well, I, you know, you, you start with the secretary. Can I speak with Donald, you know, click, you know, click. No way. Right? <laughs> That's a lesson so, right there. You know, but his new book had just come out the art of the deal. Mm. And I, and I'm like, okay, so I know the, the way the book deal works and you, you make two, three bucks a book royalty. So I knew I couldn't get a hold of Donald, but I was able to get a hold of his co-author, Tony Schwartz. And, and, and I had a show running how to make money in real estate mm. uh, with no money down on infomercials. So I called Tony Schwartz and said, I'm the S even TV guy. I see you got a great book. I'd like to sell that book as part of my package. Maybe could use a million of them because wow. uh, we're selling a ton of these packages. And he said, what? A million, a million books. And now <laughs> he's thinking he makes two bucks a book. Yep. It's a $2 million deal. But, you know, I said, but he'll I take your phone call. <laughs> yeah. So literally an hour later, he's like, can you be here on Thursday? I said, <laughs> what do you have in mind? He said, well, Donald Trump wants to meet you. So that was 48 hours. And, you know, so the bottom line is, Gotta get you, creative. Know, uh, you know, it, it, but the only people that I can't see are those that have passed on to the other life. Oh, okay? That's amazing. So do you, you think someone, go for it. do you think Kevin, do you think someone needs like mentors in like categories? Like you have a mentor for business, a mentor oh, yeah. for your, your family life, a mentor, or do you see it kind of, you have one mentor. It's tough to get an overall mentor. Okay. You, 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 you nailed it though. I have a personal finance mentor, financial planning kind of mentor. I have digital. I mean, I grew up in the days of newspapers, magazines, TV, radio, mm. right? I mean, I, sp I used to spend a hundred million a year on TV. Now, less than a million dollars a year. Wow. I spend all my money in digital. Wow. I'm on Facebook and Instagram yep. and YouTube and all the, you know, LinkedIn's, et cetera. So we, we test products lo long before they ever go to TV on all the other wow. places. So, um, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a Russell Brunson, but I reached out to Russell Brunson before he ever wrote the book click funnels and I got some mentoring from him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and again, I'm out there looking to, you know, because it, mentors can also become partners if you work it right. Right. And, and what's so bad to have, you know, an unbelievable mentor as a partner in a business and you end up getting a lot of free advice then across the board. So, but so finding mentors, not impossible. What, you know, I live in Tampa, Florida. One day a guy tells me his business, is, he, he sells products to the military and he's having a hard time getting to the right people. So I said, okay, uh, Tampa, Florida, McDill Air Force Base is right here, Central Command. They have retired generals at McDill Air Force Base whose business model is to consult businesses in a mentoring type capacity. And so I, I set up a meeting. We go out to McDill. We meet General Chip Deal. He was retired two years ago. We tell him what we're doing. And he says, oh, my God, I love this. I could open up every single door. And we cut the deal with him. The very first meeting that we had down in Dallas at the AFES, the Armed uh, uh, Forces, uh, I forget what that stands for, but A-A-F-E-S. Mm -hmm. We went right to the top levels. And my the guy that I brought, it, uh, that, that I mentored to get the right mentor was just absolutely blown away at the level that Chip Deal was dealing at in the situation. So don't be afraid to go for the biggest and the best, get them. And there's one thing you need to be when you're a mentee, be the mentor's best student. Because mm. the last thing that I want to do is pour my heart out to, a, to an entrepreneur as a mentee of mine. And a month later, hey, we went through five or six things. Oh, you know, boy, it's been a busy month. I haven't had a chance to do all that. <laughs> I'll, I'll get on it next that's month, I away. promise. Well, that's when I'm out and on to the next. Because yeah. if I'm going to soak my time into a deal, I want to know that there's some good follow through in the process. Man, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Awesome. No, so speaking of mentees and kind of how to meet a mentor, this book that you wrote, this uh, Mentor to Millions, which people can get at getmtm.com, Mark Tim. So how did you two meet? How did you come to write this book together? 
That's a great question also. And, and this is this is really cool because um, it, as I, I've reached out to lots of people to connect with and, 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 and hang out with. Zig Ziglar was one of those guys back in the day also. And Legend. so um, Zig mentored me and Zig also mentored a lot of other people, but one of them was Mark Tim. So when Zig passed away, I was talking to Tom Ziegler and Julie, the family, and I'm like, hey, you know, you've Zig built some amazing assets. You know, he had 35 books in 40 languages. Uh, he had thousands of hours of videos. And, and I said, what are you doing with all that? And they said, well, you know, not a lot. You know, we, someone wants to buy something, we sell it to them. But, you know, there's, you know, it's, it, what do you, why? Do you have some plans? I said, let's bring it back to the people. I've got two kids. One's 22, one's 32. They, they don't really know about Zig. My 32 had heard of them. My 22 said, what's a Zig? You know? so <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm like, wow, exact. he needs to get this material. So, uh, so I started down the path with Tom Ziegler do this. And he said, you have to meet Mark Tim because he's a solid digital guy. Gotcha. And maybe he can provide some help. So, our mutual mentor introduced us, and I think it was meant to be that we then joined forces to become uh, to, to write the, the book. And I mentor Mark through the process uh, as as my he's my mentee in the book, and it's through the journey that we uh, explore lots of different things and have have some fun. But there's some. some pretty good messaging. In the, what are, in the what are people going to learn from the book? Yeah. What will they learn? Well, they, the they, I mean, number one, they learn the benefits of having a mentor. Uh, they're going to learn how to get a mentor, how to be a mentor's best student. Also there, you know, one of the big things that we talk about, and, and this is what I say happens when you get a good mentor is it, you don't just build your business like, addition wise, like, let me add some, you know, Mark tells this story now uh, after the fact that he built a $10 million business and he was very happy with that. And he got it to 10 million and he ended up selling it. And so, you know, uh, Zig Ziglar would tell this story that if, if you take a cup and put some fleas in it and put a, a some kind of a lid on the cup, the fleas will start jumping to get out of that cup. And eventually you can take the lid off and the fleas are going to just keep jumping to the same level that the lid was before. Wow. They can't jump any higher and get out. And it's because they're so used to you. You, you, you know, you, you, you get what you, what you've always done, right? Yeah, yeah. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. So, <laughs> uh, so now a mentor comes in and says, Mark, I've had 20 businesses that have gone to a hundred million. So Mark, let's put a plan together, to exponentially grow your business, not to 10 million to a hundred million. And he now is on his way to build his first hundred million dollar business. And it's a mindset shift that you have to make. And that's mm -hmm. that. I mean, Zig was really big about mindset shifts. And so it, it, you know, but he, Zig was also a motivational guy, but you know, here I'm able to, to, to show Mark the, how we built this infrastructure to do this. And by the way, I've learned along the way too that it doesn't mean, oh, I'm doing 10 million and I have 100 employees. So to do 100 million, I need 1,000 employees. Right, right. You might be able to go from 100 million, from 10 million to 100 million by adding 20 employees. Right. Or you might even be able to do it by deducting employees because I had a business that I bought fulfillment centers, phone centers, customer service centers. I had 500 employees. We wanted to control it all and do it all, but it was way too much and too crazy. I could I sold off those assets and whittled it down to be able to contract out to the biggest and the best on a per, I call it a transactional based growth factor. So, so these are the things that we went through and, and also Mark ended up having this, this great idea for, you know, that was Mark's idea was connecting with his family in a more positive way because they didn't understand his entrepreneurship um, excitement. And, and so once he was able to kind of form, he formed a family business, he was able to get the family really believing and, and being fully supportive in his entrepreneurial endeavors. That's amazing. All right. Last question for you, Kevin is knowing what you know now, man, you've had an incredible career, incredible success and where you're going is amazing. 
What would you go back and tell your younger self, that high school age kid, what advice would you give them? Well, so the internet started, you know, kind of, I remember it was like early to mid nineties when I started hearing about all this internet stuff and I powered through you know, just like, well, I don't know what that is, but I'm fine doing what I'm doing with TV. And what I didn't realize early enough, I mean, friends of mine, I mean, one of my buddies, Ted Leonsis, he and I used to hang out together. I had sold a company for 10 million and he had sold a company for 10 million and mine was in cash. His was in stock. And at the time I felt I had the advantage because <laughs> I had cash. He had paper. Right. Well, he sold his company. I said, who'd you sell that company to? Ted said, some little company in Virginia called America Online. And AOL. Okay. <laughs> and so let's put it this way. Ted's a billionaire now. You know, I, I've made a lot of money, so I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, not unhappy or anything. But, you know, it's it, his 10 million took off. And so I, I because he was internet focused mm -hmm. in the in mid to early nineties. And so it really wasn't until about five years ago that I got really tuned in to the digital world. So I, I would tell my earlier self that it, you know, I was in newspaper, radio, TV, yep. magazines, et cetera. When internet hit, it was a little dismissive for me because I didn't understand it. And it was, it was foreign, but it, in, in hindsight, yes, we now, I mean, it, it's, it blows me away when I see young entrepreneurs start a little business on Amazon and, and they get it up to a couple million bucks. Yep. And then what do they do? They sell it for 10 million. Oh, that's an amazing, you know, in two years. Why? Because there are now businesses that are buying up businesses in the internet space. There's amazing opportunity. And I would just say that, that the, that the focus and and the, the the smartest thing in the world I ever did 38 years ago I went, after I had quit college and told my mom I'm done and she said what are you doing I said I'm starting a direct to the consumer business she said wait a minute there's Walmart there's Kroger's there's all right. these stores you're going to compete with all those people right. and go direct to the consumer and I said yes that's what I'm going to do she said well good luck you should have gone back to school and finished your college degree. <laughs> But I mean, here I was 10 years before Amazon, yes. many years before QVC, direct to the consumer, but I was too late to really hit internet. I would say I got five years of great, powerful experience playing in the internet space. And so I've caught up really fast and I got some great people involved with my team. But that, that'd be the only thing I could say is, is for me, I waited a little long to really embrace it. Now it's fully embraced and fully uh, ready to rumble. It's amazing. It's, that's our, that's our business now. So that, that's amazing. Consumer over the internet. So that's awesome. Kevin, thank you Thanks, so much Chad. for sharing that. And, and you can get the book mentor to millions at getmtm.com. It releases tomorrow, September 22nd, but you can go there today to pick that up. Um, and then uh, Kevin, how old do you want people to connect with you? They can connect with me. Um, at, at Kevin Harrington dot TV. Awesome. It's my, it's my website, but you can, you can leave a message in there that, that will get to me and I'll get back to you. If you got a product, you're looking for help, mentorship, capital. I'm the guy, check me out and let's see if we can help you out. Yeah. Awesome. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming on, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, hey thank you so much. Hey, really appreciate it, brother. Up on for each of you. Okay? Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. You're <laughs> amazing. Right. That was a good interview, Luke. That, that was an incredible interview. We had to let Kevin uh, hop off because yep. we wanted to respect his time. So, yep. but he was, he was gracious enough to give us. Oh yeah. There, there's minutes, so man. many, what, so many golden nuggets takeaways? in there. Yes. I mean, some of the things that like even go back to his earlier story, right. And what he learned, like the devil's in the details, Yeah. like just even understanding that some people will will try to stuff steak in a trash bag and take that out, right? I mean, the devil's in the details Those of early business, lessons. right? In his uh, early lessons there. And then just realizing like through his whole story, like the guy's ability to take action on massive ideas. And then a huge takeaway from me- well, Take action is, on the mentor. That's what advice. I was going to say is yeah. literally hearing from people who are further along than you and not being too prideful 
to where you can receive it. But I was telling Steve this on actually my way to West. I said, so many people can receive messages, but they don't believe messages. Mm. And it's like, you, it's one thing to receive it, but if you believe it, you take action on it. Yeah. And his ability to receive messages from Richard Branson, believe it and execute on it is incredible. Yeah. Like he, he came out of the Richard Branson meeting and what did he say? I, he I wrote, wrote four, four books. books. I wrote four books. Yeah, that put him on Shark Tank, one, which put him on a whole new journey. Yeah, which put him on the whole new journey. And then his 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 belief, and this is shame on me, and probably shame on you too. Yeah, it's just shame on me. Our belief. What of, I, I didn't even do anything yet. Yeah, sorry, Josh. Our belief on the guest we can have on this podcast. Oh. And I think to myself, we can have Richard Branson on this podcast, but you know why we don't? Yeah, we, haven't, we asked. haven't asked him. Yeah. Right? And just the power of being willing to pick up the phone, call the person. But I want to point out a key thing. He was willing to give value. He was willing to say, I'll sell a hundred books for you, Donald, or a million books for you, Donald Trump. Like he was willing, they put it at the small level. You mm. want to be mentored by someone? Tell him, hey, I'll wash your car for free. Yeah. Like that type of level. Like if you want to learn something from somebody, yeah. be willing to sacrifice your own time, your own money, give value so you can actually get that in return. I love what he talked about at the end there when when going back and telling your younger self, like getting to the digital world, world late. Think about this. He started doing digital in 2015. Mm -hmm. This was someone who built his entire career on television media. Yep. So if you're out there, and the reason why I bring that up is I'm thinking about our clients because we've talked to clients before who are like, I don't want to start social media now. I'm too late. I haven't gotten into it yet. Like he started this five years ago and you heard what he said with where he's spending his money on digital. All of it's now hundred million dollars going into YouTube and Google and Facebook yep. and all of those brands. And then if that works, Trying it out on, yeah. on TV. So. Well, there's a business lesson of never be satisfied. Never yeah. rest on your it's like the Yeah, it's like the fleas. Yeah. What a cool analogy there. Well, well Amazon, um, like one of Jeff Bezos' strongest uh, traits is that he's so customer obsessed mm -hmm. that he can't help but th do things like Prime. Prime was a money loser for the longest period of time. But yeah, dude, when you can buy something for three dollars and it costs ten dollars to get a ship and it's yep. free, they're losing seven dollars. They're, they're losing, every time. but his belief and where the customer was going is so strong that he's worth what 180 billion or something. Like, I'm not saying everybody's going to be worth 180 billion, but it's just well, he said something. He, he made a I read a quote the other day that it was so great. He's like, He goes, Yeah, I'm worth 100. It was someone asked, Do you feel guilty for being as wealthy as you are? And he's like, well, I, I'm worth 180 billion, but Amazon has made a trillion dollars. That means that we uh, made $830 billion for everybody else. <laughs> you want to hear a fun fact? You're closer to being a millionaire. You're closer to being a millionaire. You people who are listening to this are closer to being millionaires than Jeff Bezos is. Oh, dumb. <laughs> That's how, that's how rich the dude is. It was just rude. <laughs> yeah, it is rude. <laughs> no, thank you everybody for it's listening. Like, we just thought we'd do a fun little recap there of this episode to dive deeper into this episode, get that, those links that Kevin mentioned and also all of the show notes. You can go to staypaidpodcast.com. If you're looking for ways to support the show, there are two ways that we ask you to do that. The first way is to head on over to iTunes, rate a star five or go over to YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, yes, leave us a comment. We got a comment from episode 171 with Tamira Johnson that released uh, from Alicio, our most dedicated we commenter you, on YouTube. Thank you. He says, I believe that this will be your most watched and listened podcast because Tamira is still in the entrepreneurial trenches. I identify with everything she is going through. My wife and I used our home equity to start a business in 2008 and through no fault of our own, the economy tanked and we closed our business after one year. Thank God for nursing and reminder media on the YouTube university for weekly motivation. I've pivoted and the momentum is having traction. Thank you for hosting Tamira on your team and send her my regards. I will send positive thoughts to Lily Glow's rise out of the ashes. Go on with your bad self, sister. So thank <laughs> you, Alicia, amazing. for leaving that cup. We read that to Tamira because she's on our marketing team in our morning marketing meeting um, yesterday, and she cried. So, Alicia, you made her cry on the marketing stand-up. That's so yesterday. awesome. The best way to support the show is to tell a friend about it, share on your social medias. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast.remindermedia.com. Let us know who you want to have on the show. We want to hear what you guys, who you guys want to hear as interview. Like Luke said, we can get anybody. Yeah, we have we'll the reach belief, out to them. we have the confidence now that we can get anybody on the show. We just want to know who you want to hear from. Uh, for this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acre, and the action item is easy for this podcast. Get yourself a mentor. 
get yourself a mentor that is accomplished or that is maybe further down the road from, from where you're at and where you want to be. And think about what Kevin said. You know, you don't have to find a mentor overall for your life. It can be in a specific area in your life. Take action on that, but don't just get a mentor. Be the best mentee. Be the best student. Remember the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry Josh and I have worked is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 